This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social and Association with Betfred. We're in London today. I'd like to be joined by Chris Billum Smith. Been a while, Chris. How are you? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Just been ticking over and uh, just now into the first few weeks of camp. So, yeah, all is well. Back in camp. We're waiting to hear what's next for you. Uh, when and where are we going to next see you in the ring? Uh, looking like April uh, in London on Conor Ben's undercard. Um, obviously, that'll be against my mandatory uh, Fabio Turchi for the EBU European title. So, uh, We've obviously known it's going to be him for a while, so it's good to have an opponent early on. Um, last few, other than the Tom McCarthy, you know, the ones before, other than that have been a bit last minute, um, so it's nice to have a good focus. You mentioned to me before about having to kind of let the British go, focusing on the European and then world rankings as well. Is that kind of a natural decision that just had to be made? Uh, my hand got forced a bit uh, we tried to delay it with the board because the British purse bids got ordered um, but obviously I had my EBU mandatory as well um, which got ordered last September so we were hoping we'd be able to delay the British until after uh, unfortunately the board didn't accept that so I unfortunately had to vacate um, which is a shame because it obviously would have been boxing Mikel Lawal which is a great fight uh, and won a great fight for the fans as well um, but this is boxing, it's the politics involved. It's, a, I guess, a nice issue to have, you know, three belts and a couple of mandatories. Uh, so it's not the worst position in the world. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, I had to vacate the British. If it is going to be Turchi, what do you make of him as a fighter, Chris? Yeah, I think he's... Um, I think he's... he's obviously, he's southpaw, um, strong southpaw. Looks very durable, never looks like he's like been in much trouble in his fights from a hurt perspective. Um, had a close fight with Tommy McCarthy, had a close fight with Dylan Brejon, both of whom I've beat. Um, Brejon obviously in better fashion than the Tommy McCarthy. So for me, it's, uh, it's time to make a statement against an opponent who people know about and have, you know, he's only got one, one loss under his belt, uh, which was a real close fight with, with Tommy. And obviously I had a fight. Uh, close fight with Tommy as well so for me it's to put a statement on on that fight you know use that fight as to, to put a statement out there and, and show how much I've improved you are climbing the world rankings it's something we've spoken about that you're consistent across the board something I wanted to go back to though um, it came out um, that you've been removed from the WBC rankings for not enrolling the clean boxing program Eddie Hearn came out and said look it's just a case of the forms hadn't been done it's dealt with is that pretty much what happened yeah, uh, forms are in now, so I imagine next time they release any rankings, I'll be be backing them. So uh, not much to say on this subject, other than it was a bit of a an ad. I think I got the forms emailed to me a week after my last fight, um, and just forgot about them. Then got back in camp, and bef before I knew it, I was removed. So just a bit of an admin error on on, on my part, but uh, all sorted now. Let's talk about your stablemate, uh, Ellie Scott, and he's back in action this weekend, facing a, f a former world champion in a fourth fight, real statement of intent. You see her in the gym every day. How talented is she? Yeah, super talent. Uh, buzzing for Ellie Pally uh, on, on, uh, on Saturday night. Um, she's such a talent, and she's such a character as well. She's just um, a joy to have in the gym. But, yeah, she's, uh, from a boxing standpoint, super talented. Um, and just, uh, like... I think it goes to show fighting a former world champion in in a fourth fight. So um, yeah, it's uh, she, hopefully she can make a big statement on Saturday. Solid performance. Got people loitering behind me, hence the smoke. <laughs> anyway, we'll pick this back up with Ellie. Uh, if she goes competitive rounds with a former world champion this Saturday night, from what you've seen of her and what we've seen of her in the ring so far, is she ready to go? Is she ready for world title contention? Pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, there's nothing, nothing stopping her. She's, she's fit. She does ten rounds in the gym. Has done since she's joined us. Was does regular eight to ten round spars. Um, so yeah, she, she's ready to go. And, and the, the talent's all there. Punch power's improving. Um, she's a ferocious body puncher. Um, and I think she, you know she's ready to go for the world scene. It's just a matter of uh, matter of time. Lawrence Acoli back in action very soon against Cizlac. He's made no secret of his burning desire to get a unification fight. You're around Lawrence. What do you think goes through his head when he's chasing unifications and he see Myris Bradis getting tattooed and making songs about Jake Paul instead? Yeah, it's... I mean, I, I've got a lot of respect for Bredis. You know, he's, he's, he's been there and done it. So I kind of see why he's doing what he's doing because he's. I think he's just trying to cash out. It's not like you can blame him for ducking. 
people as such. I think he just sees Lawrence isn't as lucrative a fight as Jake Paul would be. Obviously, Jake Paul's numbers are, are a joke. Um, so he's trying to chase that. But at the same time, it's like, have some integrity, like have have a bit of pride about yourself. Don't stoop to that level for money because that's essentially all it can be about. It's, it can't be about anything else. He can't think he's a good enough boxer and it's going to improve his legacy or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it's a shame for Lawrence because Lawrence really does want the unification fights. He He's not... He's not ducking anyone, he never has, um, and I believe he's the best cruiserweight in the world, and I'd like to see him to get um, get the chance to prove it. Um, but yeah, he's obviously got Sislak now, who's a, a hard opponent for him. I think it's actually his hardest fight to date, um, but he's sparring myself and David and Yika, which I think is great sparring for him because Sislak has got decent feet and an all right variety, decent punch power, and um, but I don't think he's as skillful as me and David are. So. Um, getting those rounds in, which he has been doing, um, yeah, it's, it's great work for him. Main event this weekend, uh, wanted to get your prediction, Jacobs Ryder, who wins and how, Chris? It's an interesting one because obviously we've seen Jacobs have, have a few flat performances um, and we've seen Ryder push Callum Smith all the way, so I think it depends uh, about... You know, depends on on what Jacobs turns up. I think it's a really interesting fight. I do think it will be a close points win either way. I, I'm I'm definitely sitting on the fence of it, but um, I like John, lovely lad, and I hope he can just go out there and perform and, and get the win because it's a massive win and a massive name on his record if he can do that. Nine days away now from Carnbrook. It feels like it's been forever and ever and ever. It's almost finally here. It almost doesn't feel real. Now they are here, there's, there's still a sense of injury because we don't know how much both guys have got left, but you any idea what's going to happen next weekend? Uh, firstly, I love both guys. I have done for a year. Khan, I've watched since he was 17 years old in the, in the Olympics, and I remember we looking at an article of him doing ice baths in a, in, or an ice bin, should I say, in a, in a, like a normal dustbin, a uh, household dustbin. Um, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kel, I, I've you know I've met met Kel and nice lad and, and always respected him as a fighter as well and followed him for years. So both of them, it's it's a shame it's happening so late because it would have been an absolute spectacle I think in a bit earlier on in their careers. However, it's still happening. It's still a big fight. It's still a big money fight, um, and there's going to be a lot of eyes on it. Um, but I do think Kel's got more left. Um, but like I said, all respect to both guys. I hope they both put in good performances and, and, and the fans get what they've waited for for so long um, in that fight so yeah but uh, I do think Kel's got, got more left Last one from me uh, we saw Chrissy Wang Jr back victorious over Liam Williams last weekend and then all of a sudden all the talk that's been gathering momentum is the Eubank Ben rivalry getting going again firstly what do you make of Chris's performance and then all this talk of him fighting Connor Ben at a catchweight as well uh, Yeah I mean they both spoke about it, Con- Connor and uh, you know Con- Connor and Chris have both, both spoke about it, um, which is interesting. I think I saw an interview of Connor yesterday, him saying you know both of them want world titles, but you know these fights get built for years and, and get spoke about early on, and then they materialise. So who knows? It, c- it could happen in, in, in the future. Um, I think Eubank should have really put a statement on the other night and then got the fight finished. I think Connor's improving all the time. He's probably one of our most improved fighters in the last few years and he's an exciting fighter to watch. Uh, he's a great character as well. He's a, he's a nice lad. Um, it'd be, it, I'm buzzing to be, be on his undercard. Um, so yeah, I, I, I hope they both go and win world titles, but I think Chris has got a... I thought he boxed better the other night than he has done under Roy Jones, um, but still you've, you've got to have that finishing instinct uh, and I think that was the only thing that was lacking the other night but um, still got all the ability there that he's always had he's obviously got a granite chin anyway um, but like I said I'd like to see both Connor and, and Chris win world titles Alright Chris I think press conference is about to get going so thank you for speaking to Boxing Social catch you soon